Welcome everyone to building a Drupal 8 module. My name is Maarten de Blok. I'm a Drupal developer and coach at uh, Entity One. I'm the author of uh, Kickstart Drupal 7 and um, hopefully soon Kickstart Drupal 8. Uh, I work at uh, Entity One, very short. Uh, we deliver Drupal services. Our main service is coaching, where we help other Drupal companies, other Drupal developers, or IT uh, departments with their Drupal websites. And we are looking for a full time senior um, Drupal developer. So if anyone is interested or you know anyone, um, please uh, let me know. All right, on to the topic of the day um, building a Drupal 8 module. What are we going to talk about? First of all, the file structure. It has been changed quite a bit since, uh, since Drupal 7. The new info file the new, is a uh, new structure, new uh, type. We are going to make uh, a page, just a simple hello world, which will allow us to see how, we, uh, how the whole structure is built, where we can put our uh, information. Um, we'll need routing. The routing system in Drupal 8 has been um, completely been reworked. That's all the symphony talk you've been hearing about. Routing is a big part um, of that. We're going to make um, a simple form, and if there's enough time, I'm going to show an install file. So, it's a live demo, so things will go wrong. Don't shoot me. First of all, the file structure. Everything I'm going to show you here today is based on Drupal 8.0 Alpha 3. Uh, that's the version of September 4, 2013. That's when I uh, prepared the, um, this presentation. I think it's still the latest uh, Alpha. The dev version, of course, has been changed by now. Uh, it's still um, six months, I hear March 2014, that uh, Drupal 8 will be released in the previous session. Um, I hear it was told, so the first was August 2013, then December 2013, then we now to March. So we still have some time, but this also means that everything I say here today can totally be uh, different by, uh, by then. But hopefully the main structure will uh, remain the same. All right. Um, I installed a local XAM. With uh, a Drupal 8 core, so the Alpha 3. You can see here immediately that the structure has been changed. Uh, we have a core folder where now everything part of core resides. All the core modules, all the core teams, um, MISC libraries, etc., have all been moved here. So if you look here at the modules, here we see all the typical core modules. One of the first things I used to do uh, when checking um, the quality of a, of, a, of a Drupal website was going to look in the modules if there was anything there that wasn't core. Uh, people, uh, starters and beginners, often place their contrib or their custom modules in this folder. Now it has changed, now you have to do it here. All the custom all your custom modules, it's the logic, logical place. Um, you have to put them here, it's the most natural uh, place. All your custom teams go here, go in the teams folder. All right? So if we are going to build a new module, first thing we do, that's still the same, we make a new folder. This will be the name of our uh, of our custom module. All right. So, everything in root slash module. All your contributed, all your custom modules, go there. So, the info file in, uh, is usually the first file you create when building a new module. This is a typical Drupal 7 uh, info file. Uh, it's a custom format, it's a Drupal format, if you can call it a format, um, of course. Just uh, key equals value, key equals value, uh, etc. In Drupal 8, they've adopted YAML. An info file is also now .info.yml. YML stands for YAML. YAML ain't markup language, so it's um, a data serialization standard, human-friendly, uh, 
on God. Um, for all programming languages. So it's not something specific for Drupal. It's much broader, even broader than PHP. YAML is used across a whole lot of programming languages. Uh, everything we have for in, in structured data that is not in PHP files themselves uh, go into YAML files now. That's uh, also um, with the whole move to Symfony 2. They uh, also use YAML files quite a lot. Uh, we're going to make one. Okay. So you make a, a new file, new text file. You give it the same name as your module. Entity one dot info dot yml, and you edit it. The main differences uh, is change all change all the <coughs> equal signs to column signs, unless it's an array. When it's an array, we have to follow a new structure. All files are removed, so you don't have to reference files anymore. The core class loader uh, auto discovers them and auto loads them whenever necessary. So you do not have to uh, put any more files here. Comments are now hash comments, no longer uh, semicolon. Um, and we have a new key, a required key, and that's the type. I'm going to make a small example. So, name. This is the human friendly name, not the machine name. And spaces, case, etc. The description. Um, the package not uh, required, of course, but that's uh, still the, sta the same as in uh, Drupal 7. We need a core, which is now 8.x, a version if you want to, 8.x0.1, for example. And here we have uh, something new, the type. It's a module, if it's a team, uh, there are three possibilities, module, team, and profile. Installation profile, so module, team, or profile. And something new also as well is hidden. If you put hidden uh, on true, it will not be shown on the module list. If we go to the modules pages, it will not be found there. So if you have dependencies, uh, single. Uh, it's, an, it's an array, it can have multiple dependencies. You have to put two spaces, not a tab. If you put a tab, I'm going to show uh, um, immediately. Uh, it's not going to work. You have to put two spaces, a dash, a space, and then the module name. It's very strict. If you put a tab, three spaces, uh, anything is going to work. So, for example, I put a tab. See, it's in, uh, in red. Notepad++ recognizes YAML does not accept tabs. It only accepts spaces. So I'm going to comment this out, and it's no longer a problem. OK? So two spaces, no tabs. Right. <coughs> it's dependent C. So I'm going to save this file. And this is our info file. This is uh, processable by a whole range of, uh, of programs, of modules, of libraries in the YAML format. It is allowed to put quotes around your text. Okay. That's not necessary. All right. Before we are going to make uh, a page, a small word, word about MVC. Most programmers know what MVC is, but if you have only been programming in Drupal, it might be a little bit um, strange to you. But MVC is a um, software architecture that is used in most, if not almost all, uh, software, uh, software projects. 
It stands for models, views, and controllers. Models represent objects or pieces of data. That's actually kind of like um, an entity. Think about any that's that's your model. A view, not the views model, but more the visual representation of uh, of your data, of your list, of your piece of content, your model. And then the controllers, controllers contain the logic. That's where our, the module file uh, would be in Drupal 7. Here we are going to do the heavy lifting, the processing, um, and the controllers. <coughs> to make a controller, which is um, compliant with Symfony 2, we have to make a whole lot of subdirectories. This will look quite, um, quite strange. So, in our module root, we have to make a folder lib. In lib, we have to make a folder Drupal. In Drupal, we have to make a folder with the name of the module. And here we have to make uh, a folder controllers. Okay, this is to be compliant with the Symfony 2 framework. I hear they are working on trying to solve it, but let's see. Okay, now we have the, the folders. We can make our actual controller. This is a PHP file. So we just gave it uh, a name, ending on controller. Here we start with, uh, of course, the opening PHP tag. Then we have to declare a namespace. It doesn't exactly have to follow um, the folder structure, but it's advised to do so. So Drupal backslash entity one. Look at my slide. So the namespace uh, uh, Drupal Entity One Controller. In Symfony, we can make use of, we can import libraries, we can import parts of, um, of the framework. And we do this with the keyword use. This is uh, pretty new in, uh, in PHP. Uh, so uh, the two we need here are. Drupal backslash core backslash dependency injection container injection interface and then we need also we also need one of symphony. Hmm? Dependency injection. Where? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> so, dependency injection, yeah. Uh, symphony. So copy paste that's uh, safer, and then the container interface. All right, and then we can declare our class. So the controller is a class. Uh, Drupal A has um, the intention to move as much as possible to object oriented. So we're going to use um, a class. Um, this has to implement our container in, uh, container injection interface. So, in this interface, the terminals we have to at least have a public static function create. So, um, 
string interface container, and this just returns new static module handler. This defines its module. Okay, this is a file um, you will probably copy paste a lot when you uh, when building new, uh, new Drupal uh, modules. This is for um, meant for one page. You can uh, have multiple pages in one controller that you have to group. The intention is that you group the logic in one file. A lot of modules in Drupal 7 move their their pages in a dot pages dot ink or .admin.inc or .admin.pages.inc It's kind of the, the same ID, but now it's object-oriented. Oriented. We have one controller, and now we can have multiple methods. We can have private or public properties. Everything found um, in, in other classes we can, uh, can use here. We are going to, uh, to keep it simple. public method, uh, public function page, one page, you can name it wherever you want, and then we return a renderable array, we keep it simple here, not everything is, uh, is gone, we still have the t function, so now we have uh, a page. This, if I haven't made any other typos, should be um, a working page. But now we still need a route, we still need a path, a pattern to this page. And this is the new routing system. In Drupal 7, uh, hook menu took care of both the routing, routing, um, maybe I should define it first, is making sure the right URL or a URL is mapped to the correct page, to the correct output, to the correct function. This is routing. And then on the other hand, you have menu items. And in Drupal 7, it, um, hook menu took care of both. It did the routing and it did the menu item. Every entry in hook menu was, um, was also a route. In Drupal 8, it has been split up. You have the hook menu, still exists, it isn't gone. Uh, it takes care of the menu item, and you have now a new routing file, called the name .routing.yaml, also a YAML file, which defines, defines the actual route. We're going to start with the, um, with the YAML file. It's a new file in the root of our module. Routing.yml. Okay. First off, we have to give a machine name to the route. This is not the path. Just a machine name, a reference to our route. For example, 21 page, colon, two spaces. Then we have to define a pattern. And this is our URL. This is where uh, our URL maps to. So I just want to go to my site slash entity1. Then uh, this pattern will be picked up. Now, what does it have to do? Here you define some defaults. Oh, I used the tab. Two spaces. And here we have several, um, we 
have several possibilities. Uh, okay. Here we have um, the pump content. Plugin content or contents. Should be just content. Okay. And now the path starting with a backslash to our controller, to our actual function. So we do not have to include the lib, but we may not include the lib. Just Drupal backslash entity one backslash controllers <coughs> and backslash um, backslash entity one controller. Hello? It's gone. Battery plot. Um, I'm going to try to speak up. If you can't understand me, please raise your hand and I, uh, I will repeat. Um, so, we have the, the content. We refer to our controller, but also the function inside the controller that has to be called. So, I have namespace, I have the name of the class, no.php, it's not really the path, it's the namespace. Um, two columns and then the function is our function. Okay, we're back. Our function is entity one page. We're gonna call here entity one page. All right. Um, we can also add requirements. What are requirements? For example, a requirement is a, is a permission. So we, do no, uh, we no longer define, define the permission or the access content, um, sorry, the access callback and access arguments in the hook menu. We define it here. So the permission we need is access content. So general uh, permission. This is one, zoom out a little bit. This is one routing item. So we have a machine name to start with. We have a pattern, the actual URL that is going to, uh, to follow, and where the content uh, is required. Just going to double check on the requirements and permission. Some things are. Um, Mervot, plural, some uh, uh, are single. So just double checking. All right, only only one more step uh, before we can see our uh, our hello world. We are going to make our good old trusty dot module file. All right, it's a PHP file. It's gonna change the language here to PHP. And now we can implement um, hook menu. <coughs> here not much has changed. Um, a lot of things have been moved, of course. So what we've already defined, like permissions, uh, and the page callback in the routing file, we no longer have to define here. Um, so, array items. Still have a title. But I hear it's going to move as well to the uh, to the routing file. But for now, we still have the title. So. In our item here, we have to use the same pattern. It has to be the same. one title. We can still add the description. We can still add the type of the menu item. You really have to think here. 
what is more the menu item. So is it a menu callback, is it a normal menu item, title, description, etc. is still defined here. And you have to add one more thing. You have to add a route name. That route name is the machine name we've placed in the, uh, in the routing file. Reused entity one page. Then we have to use entity one page here as well. All right. Now <clears throat> we're gonna test. This is our uh, Drupal eight installation. Just a fresh installation. I haven't done anything um, with it yet. Modules is no longer called modules. In Drupal 8, it's called extent. The path is still modules. <laughs> um, a great improvement here, uh, we no longer need the module filter to have a, a decent search. So now we can just here, entity, and we see the entity one module. I cannot enable it because I have a dependency to devil. That's still the same. Still not clickable. There is an 8 version. And they haven't changed it. Now I will be able to enable it. Save the configuration. It will still ask, uh, devil is required. Do you wish to continue? Yes. Moment of truth. We are working on performance after we get it working. All right, configuration has been saved. And now I go to my pattern. Boom. All right. We have an invalid argument exception. So Drupal entity one controller, entity one controller does not exist. This refers to my uh, routing file. So I, uh, so I have to go looking in my routing file. Oops, uh, wrong. Um, Drupal entity one controllers entity one controller Drupal entity one controllers entity one controller controller yes entity one page this is looking good Entity one controller implements controller. Ah. All right. Refresh. Thank you. <laughs> So, it's, uh, you can see a lot have been, has been moved around. Um, we have to move to the, to the classes, the routing file, etc. It's uh, a different way, um, way of working. All right. This should be um, everything about uh, the routing. Forms have, has, have also been, uh, been changed. Uh, just as we we were splitting pages in new files, we're also splitting forms in new files. It follows quite the same pattern. So we create a new file, 
but instead in um, lib Drupal your module controller, we have a folder named form. So I made form, and here we define a new PHP file. Form.php. Yes. Principle is the same. It's of course a PHP file. We have to open the PHP tag. We have a namespace. Drupal backslash your module backslash form which is single. Okay. Uh, we have to make use of different libraries. Um, here it's Drupal backslash core backslash form backslash form interface. There are uh, different modules you can um, or libraries you can load here to have a, a system settings form or to have specific types of forms you can um, call different functions to have some um, inheritance already in place. Um, this should be it. And we make our class, we will call it entity line form implement the form interface. And the form interface defines we have to have at least a form ID and build form. And we have the possibility to add validate form and submit form. So it's less name based as in Drupal 7, where you had a function with the name of your form and then the same name underscore validate is the validate, same name underscore submit is the submit function. Here you have one class. The Get form ID returns the ID. It used to be the name of the function was your form ID. Now you return it through uh, get form ID. Second is build form. This is the actual form. You still have to return an, uh, uh, a form array. Uh, good news, uh, it's still the same as in Drupal 7. You do not have to learn a new form API. Uh, it's the same form API as in Drupal 7, at least um, for, for the basic items. There are more items. There are more HTML5 items uh, integrated as like email feeds, uh, etc. Uh, then we have the validate form where you do some validation on your data and the submit form where you do the actual handling the form handling. So we're going to start with get form ID. Public, else it's not going to work. Public function get form ID, ID both capitals. Return a string. Then we have our public function build form. This you will recognize. We have our form and our um, form state. Form state is still by reference. This means our build form is still bookable. And at the end, we return a form. To define form items, it um, still looks a lot like the Drupal 7 form API. So let's say this is an admin form where users have to enter an API key. This is still an array. We 
we are going to start with a simple text field. Uh, title. Um, and then of course we still need a submit button form you can see this is pretty much the same as Drupal um, 7, Drupal 7 type is submit and to give it a name it's a value like this all right now we are going to need a place to see our form we're going to have to call uh, the form this can also be done from the routing file we start with a new excuse me we start with a new um, machine name form spaces pattern if we put it in admin um, config yes uh, development it will still follow the admin menu toolbar just like in Drupal 7 if you gave a path like this it would appear in the admin toolbar or in the toolbar whichever you used that's still uh, still the same so it still goes um, it still depends on the path admin config development entity one I'm really going to have to learn to stop using that. Now, instead of contents, we hear content we have here form. Same principle. Do not forget the first backslash. Drupal module name form and, and just the name of the form. Like this, it's one only one form uh, in a class, so you do not need to specify any function or any method um, behind it. Okay, and here, uh, here too, we can add requirements. Um, what was the new one in Drupal 7? <coughs> what is it still saying? I don't know. I'm user 1, I can still access anything anyway. Alright, but same principle here. I'm going to flash the cache. Uh, duration. Build the menu cache. And it's not there. I, of course, I still need my, uh, no, I don't need my menu. I still need group menu. Yeah. Should be here. If you want to show up, yes. Then then you need to add as many right. Else it will just be there the parent. So if I go here.
No. Ah, permission. Oh, this could be. Okay, they're already calling the form, that's good, that's a good sign. <laughs> Line 7, I can deal with that. Line 7, class entity rights. <laughs> ah, it has to be the uh, get entity. Right, we're going to add the validate function. Um, so we have validate form and submit form. Just going to let them do nothing. It's the same pattern, but they're both by reference. So form and um, uh, form state are by reference. I'm just going to do nothing. And submit form. <coughs> yes. So we have our API key. We have the save button. That was easy, right? <laughs> In our validation or our submit form, we still get the same old form state. I'm just going to uh, design them for you. And to set an error, it's still form set error. API G. So we have our DSM because the devil module is, uh, is installed, is enabled. We have a renderable error here. And our values are, it's pretty much the same as in Drupal 7. We have uh, a key with values. You can see the API key. You can see what operation has been used. You can do your um, everything you want, um, everything you need with validation in this function. All right. The submit is, um, is pretty much the same. You still have your form, your form state, and here you can um, process the data. One great way is to put it in, uh, in the new configuration management. There's a, I think, fantastic session uh, after this one about configuration uh, uh, management. Um, I only have a few minutes left. I just want to show you one more little thing is uh, books are not gone. So that's all the forms. I'm going to upload slides to the, to the site. Um, module file, I'm going to skip the, so skip the install file for now. Um, books are not gone. You still have a long list of books here. There are, of course, changes. Some have changed name. Some have disappeared, some have been added, but we still have a lot of books we can work with in our .module file. And just as an example, Chrome. So, clear the cache. 
I'm old school, old school, so I still go to report, status report if I want to run the command manually. And we have a copy. Okay. All right. Um, in conclusion, a lot has been uh, moved around. Some item, some things are familiar. Some, uh, some are not. Symphony 2 is deeply integrated. That's why we have this this folder uh, structure. YAML is a standard for the settings. We see a lot of more um, OO. Uh, Form API is still here. Um, and hooks are not gone. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? No. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> what about uh, extending uh, form? Uh, Hooking? We have an existing module. Yes. Uh, and we want to insert some uh, new... It's, uh, so it, you actually want to do a hook form alter. Yeah. Yes, it still exists. You can still um, alter the hooks. That's why in the code, uh, in our form code, everything is passed by reference. So if any changes are made, they are passed along through the different classes and different functions. So form alter still exists. I think it's uh, it's good you'll be forced to have this separation which was um, was not forced in Drupal 7 um, so far I haven't uh, made that many Drupal 8 modules uh, yet either, it's still early days. Um, uh, the only objection I have, some things are OO, some things are not OO, it's still kind of both worlds. I would rather see it all in, uh, in OO, <coughs> personally. Okay, then I'll leave you to your next session. <laughs> <laughs>